Hi everyone, welcome once again. So we are looking at the second part of the business ecosystems. Um, so we ended the first part with a question, with a, a simple case study on looking at Porter's um, forces, okay, the, the competitive strategies. And what we said was that in your own time, try and look at it. So we'll be starting from there. However, what I'm going to do is that I'll leave the question so that it will give us the time for us to delve into it during our live sessions. Okay. So we saw the question about Charlton. The, the, the solution is just there. Okay. In the slide, you will see it. Um, not to make things so complicated, you can look at it. Um, try to align it with the, with the knowledge, with the learning outcomes on this one. But when we meet during the live sessions, we'll be we'll, we'll delve deep into it. Most likely, we'll put up some additional questions so that we can work around it. Okay, there's enough questions here for us to do, so not to worry ahead so much. Okay, so these are the solutions. You can equally find it in the Kaplan Sima E2 text. Okay, the 2020 edition. Same same question is repeated in the 2021 edition, the latest edition. So. So it doesn't change much. Okay. All right. So now let's move on. We've looked at the introduction of what the concept of business ecosystems. We, we've looked at these ecosystems, the pastel factors, and the um, Porter's five forces and competitive strategies. Now the fact, the next section we're looking at, we'll cover everything, remaining aspects, the participants, the stakeholders, what they do, what are their, what are their roles. We'll not delve deep into the concept of stakeholders, but we'll look at them most likely, mostly concentrating on, on the main players, the suppliers, the customers, okay, regulation. Then we'll look at what are these ecosystems? What, what, has, what, what is it? How do we regulate the business models? Okay, and the customer expectations. Now as a company, how do you create value? How do you measure and recognize value? How do you report value, capture value, okay? Um, so stakeholder concept simply deals with someone the company can influence or can affect, and someone who can equally affect or influence the stake, the, the, the company. So it's a two-way approach, symbiosis, okay? So he can affect the company by his actions, by whatever he does. The company can equally influence them. The concept of stakeholder is too broad. We we want to, if, if you look into the, the stakeholder theory, it tells you that there are two branches, the normative, then the ethical, okay, the managerial and the ethical. Let me put those two there, the managerial and the ethical. The ethical says that deal with everyone or everything that is influenced or can be influenced by the company. So if there is a generation that is yet to be born, and we know that our business activity can destroy the water bodies, such that the next three generations will come and will not get water, you must make sure you satisfy those who are yet to be born. It's quite difficult for you to even plan for, for the next 10 generations when you don't know what will happen. Okay, sometimes the, the, the ethical is saying, the th ethical stakeholder theory is saying that you can you should even consider the habitat, the animals in the sea, um, somebody who is far and remote uh, remote from your place, or somebody living in the Amazon, deep somewhere in, in an African forest. They are saying that your actions could influence them in the years to come. That's ethical theory. Normative, the, the managerial theory, ethical is the same as not normative. The, the managerial um, stakeholder theory says that no, we can't satisfy everyone. Let's identify the the key stakeholders, the shareholders, the customers, the the government, the society, okay, the lobby groups. Let's identify those who actually impact our operations, and then we satisfy them. We meet their needs. That's the managerial the theory of stakeholders. So it's broad. It's broad. Stakeholder theory always has its question marks and its positives. Okay. Now we know what technology can do in so far as the business um, ecosystems are concerned. If you don't adjust to the technology, we'll store it in the pastel factors, then you, you, you will not be competitive. You fall behind. Take example, Nokia. Nokia started, and today we cannot even hear of Nokia. They are now trying to pick up because they didn't catch up with technology. 
Today, Apple is leading the way. Android phones, Samsung, Huawei, they are leading the way because they've adjusted to technology. They made sure their, their products are meeting the new trend, efficient, faster operating systems, okay? Although the Pentiums are now missing. We now have the Intel. We have them, them, okay? Faster, robust, so that we can always rely on them to do our work efficiently and quickly. So, in so far as you are working, finding yourself, even in, in service industry, not just in manufacturing, you must ensure that you catch up with the latest technological advancements than the other industries so that you can always have a competitive edge and advantage over them. In recent years, we have digital evolution. Things are changing. Okay, you, you sit in your room and ask Alexa to turn off the lights and he turns it off. Customers are becoming complicated. Therefore, you must also ensure you integrate some complicated um, mechanisms within your operations to meet these changing needs of customers and of the society. Otherwise, you'll fall behind. Okay, If you want to risk the future of your, of your business, don't catch up with technology. COVID has even exposed us the more. So all companies who adapted to IT systems are, are still surviving are still surviving. Today, we are now learning online. It used not to be. It should be a traditional classroom setting. But technology is helping to ensure that education still continues unabated and no disruptions. There are some challenges with technology as well because we don't get to see the face-to-face -face relationship that we would normally get in a traditional classroom setting. So technology is key. And of course, I've mentioned it. If you are a professional, it has been anticipated that, it has been stated that if you have any IT knowledge and you don't upgrade it, in five years you become obsolete and people will overtake you, regardless of your experience. Take example, the music industry. Gone were the days we used to rely on cassettes. You know, we just slot them into the cassette players. Then in the, that was in the 1960s, 70s, it even came into the 90s, yeah, 1990s, cassettes were still there. But in the 80s, we saw Walkman coming up. You have this, your Walkman, you fix, and then it is on you, listening to music. Then CDs started evolving. In the 90s, we got portable disc. We have the, the is it the square disc, which we use, not the, the circular one, okay? And the mini disc, MP3 players, okay? Then in the 2000s, we saw the iPods coming out, Microsoft Zoom iTunes then started emerging gradually. Then we saw the, the smartphones popping up, the Android, the iPhone, podcast, YouTube. Now, today in the 2010, we now have streaming music online. You don't have to go and buy a cassette or a disc. You subscribe to Spotify and you can get your music. You are subscribed to um, Amazon. You get Amazon Music, Apple Music, iTunes, okay? Bluetooth connectivity, these are now working. Now in the 2020, we have high definition music all be at once even on your phone you don't need to um even find an, an uh is it equalizer or something you just have to change the tunes and everything is working you feel the sound in your ears as if you're in the real studio question i ask myself is 2025 and beyond what will we find and of course technology will always keep us moving things will change things will change so as a business you must always catch up with these systems the business ecosystem is not a linear sequential element. It is usually connected, a matrix. It can be complicated, but one good thing about it is that it's intelligent. Okay, so I sit here and I want to trade something in the US and I have someone who can easily trade it for me. It's scalable. You move from one level to the other. You can always change from becoming a consumer to, to a, a supplier. So if I have a phone I'm not using, Gone were the days where you have to now look for friends and market it. Put it online on eBay. Someone will buy it. Someone will even pick it up instantly. Facebook now has a marketplace. Okay, so organizations are changing quickly because customers are changing quickly. Customers are becoming complex. So if you want to meet these, their changing needs, it is interesting for us to also equally integrate our product experiences, customer-centric experiences, and make sure we meet their shared values. So think outside the box, okay? You must always operate within the, the needs, the requirements of the changing needs of the customers. And you can't do it alone. Partner someone who can easily do it. Today, you see Uber 
partnering a number of food vendors, restaurants. And so you can order your food in your home and Uber will go and pick it up and bring it to you. Just eat. Deliver. Remember, you know all, all of these things, okay? So we should always look out for the situation as a business if you want to survive, to collaborate and survive. That's what ecosystem means, okay? So ecosystem simply talks of the network of organizations, the suppliers, the distributors, the customers, the competitors, even the regulators who are involved in delivering a specific product or a range of products in, in, in such a way that it will both enhance competition and it will also help us to work together, cooperate, working together, okay? So we must work together if we want to meet these changing complex needs of customers. In that case, we'll be able to adjust and meet the value that they need and we'll also ensure we allocate value. So I sell my phone I sit in the comfort of my home. I use the platform of, let's say, Amazon or eBay. It goes out. I'll get my money. eBay will get a cost commission. The supplier who also deliver it to the customer also gets something. So we all work together in a complex situation so that we can enhance the value. So the statement always holds the whole is greater than the individual parts. And the whole can always work together. So team working is good. Team working is now happening. If businesses want to survive, it's not about a soul or a lone ranger. You work together to deliver. So again, the business ecosystem is broad. It can cut across countries, geographical locations and industries. It could be dealing with both private and public institutions. Um, name them. Uh, profit making, not for profit making. They always come together and ensure that they create value. At the end of the day, you gain again. It's a win-win situation. That's what the ecosystem talks about. So the ecosystem is more integrated. Value creation, um, a loop, network. It's not usually linear. It can be a matrix. Go forth and back by the end of the day, create value. Okay. Now, there are two defining characteristics of uh, any successful um, business ecosystem. One, orchestration okay so we're talking of collaboration we are collaborating we are working together as participants within this business ecosystem to deliver value it can be a formal relationship or an informal relationship okay so an example the care consortium they orchestrate insurance so the hospitals the care consortium deals with health insurance deals with the nhs system the hospitals deals with getting qualified physicians they even work with the universities to ensure that they get some medical research into their portfolio. At the end of the day, we want to provide uh, an integrated quality healthcare to our suppliers, to our vendors, okay, to, to those who need us, okay. So we don't we, we, we need to work together. We need to work together as intelligent uh, parties, having our different or divergent expertise, skills, knowledge. But we bring it together to ensure that we will be able to deliver value to the customer, to the end user. Okay. A local one can be a mortgage app, one way direction, okay, where they will link, they will link the vendor, the one who is selling the house, to the customer who needs it. And they can add, link you to a mortgage advisor or even to the bank or to the credit score. So it's a loop. It's a, it's, a, it's a network where we always want to make sure that pick up the pieces of expertise, bring them together, deliver quality value at the end of the day. Then the second characteristic besides orchestration is the mutuality. Enhanced. How, how, how is the level of coordination enhanced? How is it promoted? How is it quality? To, to, to what extent can we measure the quality of it? Okay, Whether formally or informally. In terms of our shared values or ideals what are the goals what are the objectives what are the standards we are all working towards so in the healthcare consortium for example we will not pick up any any person outside any person outside the consortium we all share the same value that let us get someone who understands and share the beliefs of quality healthcare you don't just go and pick um, a mechanical engineer because his role doesn't really work. It doesn't really fit within the shared values. So mutuality is talking of, do we all share the same value? Okay, so if Uber deals with transport, private transport, 
and Uber is now partnering with KFC or any um, Domino's just to be able to provide food. The idea is that can we easily deliver the right item to the customer with less frustration? We're still dealing with transport. If the customer is coming to your shop, he will drive a car or he pick a taxi. So in that case, let him relax in his home whilst I order and then the Uber picks it up. So mutuality, enhanced level of coordination, shared values, quality goals being tied together. Okay. Now within these, we'll look at, we are going to look at the goals, okay? The detailed goals, the challenges, and we'll look at some a matrix, an archetype, a model within the business ecosystem. So um, in summary, we're looking at the goals. We are looking at the fact that if it is a healthcare consortium, for example, we will always have high barriers to entry. We don't just sit back and all of a sudden somebody comes up, puts up some healthcare consortium and knocks it off our feet. So they work in, with a high level of orchestration and mutuality to prevent others from easily entering the market. They also leverage on technology, track and trace, okay? Um, you'll be there and they will send you an, an email or a message. Someone will call you because they leverage on technology to ensure that they can provide quality value to, to the end users. Again, they have to, they, the goal is to compete effectively against competitors and it links up with creating high barriers of entry into the market situation. Again, they also work to bring about new systems of change, collaborate and look at how we can address some societal and environmental challenges. The, the COVID situation is a clear example. Take the healthcare se se sector, they work with their universities to do a detailed research into what is causing this COVID, what is making it rise. They said once you move, the, the virus moves because they have some technically good guys from the university's medical research within the consortium who will do this research and come out with good um, guidelines to tell you that sociality, make sure you, uh, you follow social distancing rules, wash your hands, use sanitizers, use hand, uh, face masks, so on and so forth. So they drive new collaboration to ensure that they meet their overall goal to solve societal challenges, not just environmental. Another goal is to harness creativity, innovation, okay, um, to en enhance productivity. At the end of the day, once they bring up good creativity and innovation, they end up gaining some competitive um, advantage. Not only competitive advantage, they also end up leveraging on economies of scale. So they will produce at lower cost. The same thing could be produced at a lower cost, okay, and, and one other goal is that they help to create new ways of addressing human needs. So should we always use the same approach to learning? No. We can use an online version. We can use a hybrid version. So they work together to ensure that we can draw on the technical competencies of the partners within the loop, within the matrix, to produce or to provide alternative ways of meeting societal needs and human needs. Now, the traditional market is linear. I go in I, I, to the sea or to the shore. I buy my fish, the fresh fish. The fisherman will only go to the to the shore, to the to the sea, get the, the animal products, bring it to me. I go to the shore, I buy it, I come home, maybe I send it to to someone who is expert in it who polish it up for me, scrape it, and give me the end product, and I go and enjoy It's linear, one step to the other. So supplier will get it, give it to a middleman, but the man gives it to the final consumer. Consumer enjoys it. Consumer disposes of something. Somebody takes it off. That's the linear in terms of value creation. So everybody is just more or less living under the notion of each one for himself, God for us all. That's the traditional market system. But the ecosystem is not that way. In creating value, they network, they are mutual. So the supplier could become a consumer one day. The middleman could become a consumer. So they work together in a form of a matrix relationship. Very flexible, where they try to bring on board their technical capabilities so that wherever there is a gap, they'll fix it. So instead of the fisherman just going to the sea, bringing the fresh fish, they will decide that before I bring it from the sea, I'll send it to the coastal. The coastal will arrange everything 
So you see the, the fishing company having a cold store, they will bring you to the cold store. The cold store will fix everything. So before you go in as a consumer to buy, everything is fixed already. So it's a network. Flexible. Play your key part. Ensure that we can identify the loopholes, the gaps within the supply chain system. And then we fill it up. Okay. At the end of the day, we want to create output, value, that will benefit every party. And in so doing, our value goes up. If it's monetary-wise, instead of the, the fisherman just selling the fish to me at £100, I'll end up buying it at £120 because he's added some value to the, to the raw fish. Okay, So participants will always capture value, sometimes directly, sometimes later at the end of the product of the of the project. So indirectly through an, an orchestrator. Okay, a middleman, more or less. Okay, now how do they capture value? How do they recognize and measure value? Everyone along the continuum within the within the matrix or whatever network they have must pursue different actions to capture value. So middleman does his part. The the supplier does his part. The final consumer does his part. Okay, the main producer does his part. Be, depending on the kind of ecosystem they are running. Now, what we have to know is that different strategies will apply in different business ecosystem environments. The health or the service sector will have a different strategy they will use. The product will have a different strategy. Those who mix both um, products and services will also have different strategies. So it depends. Okay, it depends. But in all cases, they have to consider the complexity. How complex are the participants? How sophisticated is the processes? How complex? How complicated is the whole system of the business ecosystem? Orchestration is also another thing they have to consider. The extent to which the organization um, and organization influence others and how they enforce it and how they comply. Okay, So it gives us an archetype which we normally use in identifying these values. So IBM, uh, you can see this particular document a detailed document on the business uh, ecosystems by IBM, which we've populated on Aula. So you can take a good deep look into it. Okay. Now, IBM reported the new age of ecosystem and it talks of two models, archetypes, or archetypes like an original model, something we look on it to, to produce something else. Okay. So the complexity, like I said, two main elements they should always look at the complexity and the orchestration. Is it high or low? In terms of complexity, is the orchestration low or tight? Is it loose or tight? Okay. Now, in a very clear way, I would like to explain one of these things for us to look at it. So there, you can see there are two quadrants over there. We have two quadrants. The hornet's, hornet's, hornet's nest has a very high complexity, but low orchestration. Okay. These, these normally are situations where we have simple networking systems. Values are usually transferred directly. So by means of paying a specific amount to enjoy a certain activity. Take example, the, the media industry or the, the entertainment business. You see every somebody wants an action movie. Someone would like to watch series. Someone wants to watch uh, a trailer. Okay, so we all have different different elements. So in terms of complexity, it is high. Okay, in terms of complexity, it is high. But orchestration is usually low because the technology they leverage on in producing all of this usually is the same. You see one room just in a studio and they produce all the Marvel Studio movies that we want to see. So orchestration quite, but everybody wants a different taste of a particular movie. So you can see customers are not willing to be tied to one single product of content view. We want different. I want to watch different different types of movies, trailer, romantic movies, and so on. So that's the hornet's nest, okay? The lion's pride, like the name sounds, the lion's pride. So very high orchestration, very high complexity. At this point, you realize that it is difficult for for any other person to break into the market. Threats to entry is very low because it is very complex for you to break through. And there are very rigid and strict arrangements 
So breaking into the chain is difficult. You need to meet a lot of regulations and, and bylaws and procedures in order to, to break through. Okay. So the orchestrator will normally monitor activities on the market. And then they will normally reward you, the individual participants, based on their expertise. Again, let's take an example, the healthcare. The healthcare system is quite complex. Um, orchestrating is quite tight because you cannot just... You cannot just go out and pick anyone at all. You need experts, surgeons who will work on, or physicians who will work on cancer patients. You, you need quality healthcare insurers or providers or hospitals who have all the equipment needed to treat a particular patient. A patient comes in with a unique situation and it is a matter of life and death. So you must be careful who works on him, who is providing the insurance, and, and the facilities and everything. So this, this is quite difficult for you to break into. Even the university system, the educational system, you cannot just wake up and, and get up one day and set up a university in, in this country or in this part of the country. It's difficult. You need to go through a lot of protocols. You need to make sure you meet all the regulations in line with higher education academy, okay, UK higher education academy. You must also hire quality staff, both teaching and non teaching staff, make sure you have the infrastructure, you have the technology to meet it. Lion's Pride. Then we have the, sh the shark tank. They have low orchestration, low complexity. So anybody at all can break into it. Each one for himself. God for us all. That's more of what they are doing there. So talk of the retail industry. New technologies will just come up and somebody will decide to set up his retail business without um, without any, any cost. Okay. Customers can also easily switch from one product to the other at will. No cost to them. Low cost, okay? So it is usually, um, it normally is associated with intensifying competition. Everybody can break in. So you are not holding a mono monopoly or oligopoly over some groups of uh, customers or products and services. Then we have the hoof pack. Low complexity by high levels of orchestration. Again, at this point, Barriers to entry are very low, like the lion's pride. Orchestration is very high. Okay, you need to get a lot of technology or leverage on some technical competencies in order to manage it. Okay, so as much as activities could be very simple, the environment is highly sophisticated. An example, the energy sector. What we see in the energy sector, we can see that customers can now become um, producers. I can install a solar panel on my roof as a customer with Scottish gas, and soon I can leverage on my solar panel to reduce my energy cost. That's the wolf pack. Okay. All right, let's move on um, for the sake of time. So ecosystems, we business ecosystems need to react or provide the needs of the customers directly, sometimes indirectly, in response to the changing technological needs or the customer demands of the time. Now, traditionally, they change as time moves on, as, as situations change. But we need to regulate the change so that we don't monopolize the system. We don't end up hijacking just the IT world or the music world or the entertainment business. So regulation is very important. Regulation could be very slow during this stage, but it normally works. And sometimes it ends up becoming very rigid. The question we need to ask ourselves is, how do we regulate a market that is changing, always changing, dynamic, flexible? Okay, when products and services blend between customers, how do we do that? Do we need regulation? We need regulation to ensure sanity and harmony within the system. But there are some change, some challenges, okay? There are some challenges with regulations. We're talking of the speed of change. Okay, how quickly can we change the speed of change? How quickly can we adapt to the speed of change? Can we keep up with big data? But we cannot manage big data. Okay, talk of also innovation. Innovators have found a back door. Gone were the days where you could have governed taxis who are taking over the, the private transport system. But Uber found a way around this hurdle and set up a business on its own so that they can compete with these governed taxes, okay? Now, evolution, ecosystems, they change, they evolve, they are not rigid. 
So we should always look at, in terms of regulation, what are the challenges? What can we can we can we meet the changing nature of competition? Okay, the business model can we adapt it easily without any cost? Okay, and then innovations across um, jurisdictions. Okay, they move across board. Sometimes the lines are blurred. You cannot really see the 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 distinction between one and the other. But innovation helps to define products, to define market boundaries. Who is buying what? Where do we have our limits? Geographically, technically, anyhow you can think of, okay? So the lines could be blurred sometimes, all right? So these are the challenges we have with regulating an, a complex, dynamic, ever-changing um, ecosystem. There could be more. But these are the main ones. Finally, before we wrap up, talk of the ecosystem demands and the business demands. Customers always want values. How does the business meet these values? So we want tailored product, customized product. We want seamless experience across channels. Answer my query immediately when I send a follow-up email. Anytime, anywhere, can you provide this service to me? Can you provide a transparent service? Can I sit behind my PC and serve myself? Okay, great service. We need it. That's what you and I as customers will always need. Businesses, in order to meet these needs, must think ahead of time. We should design something to be able to meet these tailored needs or transparent needs that customers want to see. We should also run some pilot models to see if this will meet the needs. Do we have any prototypes? Do we have to customize our goods in such a way that people will know that this is specifically designed for customer A? Okay. So in summary, ecosystems is a partnership. It's a network, an alliance, collaboration where we work together to ensure our business survives. Okay. Fundamentally, if you want to survive, use a good business ecosystem. Okay. But factors who, that will underline the algorithms that will underline your success hover around the business strategy, the models the businesses use, any leadership um, prospects or leadership style, core competencies and advantages that we hold as a company. How do we create value? How do we measure value? How do we report value to the organization, to the participants, even to customers? Okay, and then also consider um, any other changing needs that comes up, especially in the way of technology. So this will be our key focus within the enterprise model. So one after the, the other, we'll go through the leadership, business models. We're just looking at these core competencies, value creation, business organization. We'll look at this in the rest. Okay. Finally, question. So using today's slides, try to bring about or analyze in a group or if individually anyone uh, will, will communicate. So just do this work. Okay. Um, how choose either one, just Apple or Amazon, one of them, and analyze their their ecosystem. Okay, one or two, three slides is enough. Okay, in your analysis, you can present it using slides or pre-recorded, shared in class during the live sessions. Now, any information you use, try and reference them, academical references with me, or even if you are using published documents from these websites, reference them, please. And in doing the assignment, look at the defining characteristics, okay? Um, has, has it achieved its goal? Give your opinion, okay, objectively. How does it add value? What are the archetypes? Justify. I'll give you an example of Apple. So Apple, for example, has this ecosystem in terms of uh, products and services they provide. So it's iPhone, Apple devices, operating systems, third-party applications where you have to pay something to own it okay iCloud their services their store and then iTunes all right so these are what helps this are something you can always think of use Amazon as well um, Amazon also has some of these all right so time files gone I exceeded my 30 minutes so I hope it is useful all right see you in the next session friends take care bye bye